Hey everybody, top of the hat from the permanently unelected mayor of Coney Island, that's me, Dick Ziggin, professionally artistic director of a not-for-profit arts organization, Coney Island USA. If you've been watching these videos weekly in what is now uh, my television show, this is actually episode number 17. If you just happened across this one, let me back up a bit. Back in March when the pandemic hit and audiences got shut down and entertainment got shut down, Coney Island USA, the cultural arts organization that does the Coney Island Museum, that does the Mermaid Parade, that does the Coney Island Circus Sideshow was shut down. It's the pandemic. Like you, we were shut down. I've been on furlough. I just got rehired because New York City's in phase four. But even though I'm back at work, I'm no longer furloughed, um, we can't open. So I'm doing these videos. First, let me talk to you a little bit more about Coney Island USA, a charitable, not-for-profit, tax-deductible arts organization. If you go to our website, ConeyIsland.com, you can find out about the virtual mermaid parade. There will be a mermaid parade tail a -thon on Saturday, August 29th. Find out about it. Sign up to be part of it at ConeyIsland.com. My weekly speeches, this television weekly TV show, you can find each week if you go to ConeyIsland.com slash state. While you're at ConeyIsland.com, please shop our online gift shop for the super cool Mermaid Parade t-shirt and face masks and mugs and lots of other great stuff. Please consider making a charitable donation. Please consider buying a membership. Coney Island, USA, very cool and tax deductible. But meanwhile, this is episode number 17. A lot of you sent postcards and letters, called up my network and said, we really like seeing how the cyclone roller coaster works and how it would socially distance if it reopened. So what are we going to do today at the beginning of August? Well, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to the Wonder Wheel. Um, so I hope to see you all in Coney Island. Please do drop by Coney Island USA because our outdoor sidewalk cafe should be open selling beverages, selling beer, and selling Governor Cuomo approved delicious, yummy sandwiches. I kid you not, we're going to have real food. Meanwhile, turn around, we're going to go right there to the Wonder Wheel. Hey, let's go. Where's the traveling music? So here we are at this incredible neon sign, which is part of the landmark protection for the Wonder Wheel. The Wonder Wheel opened in 1920. That means the Wonder Wheel is a hundred years old. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Remember to wash your hands. Happy birthday, dear Wonder Wheel. Happy 100th birthday to you. Except the birthday celebration was canceled. The ride's not open. Um, my friends, the Voderis family, who bought the Wonder Wheel, restored the Wonder Wheel, take such good care of the Wonder Wheel, um, want to talk to us today. Maybe I can take you on a ride on the Wonder Wheel, show you behind the scenes how the ride works, and 
let's talk to the Voderis family, very well respected and loved family in the amusement industry, about how easily they could social distance this ride. Let's see if anybody's home. The gate's unlocked. I spy a Voderis. Come on in, guys. Let me close the gate. Oh, it's more than one Voderis. Well, you're being surrounded. The entourage. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. How are you? Good um, oh, Good morning. All right. So, um, I've known your family since I showed up uh, in Coney Island in the early 80s when Coney Island USA was based on the boardwalk at West, West 12th Street. Right. We were neighbors and I knew your dad, uh, your grandfather, uh, Dino, uh, who contributed many items to the Coney Island Museum. We were neighbors, we became friends. And I'd now like we're to think we're tight. Now yes. we're family. Um, so let me turn it over to the Voderists to speak for themselves, especially the next generation. I'm going to try and like not be so dominant and ask questions. Tell us about the Wonder Wheel. Tell us about how much you want to reopen and how safely you can do that. And like, tell us about the celebration. We should be having. We should, we should be have having. Well, we're gonna celebrate when we can celebrate safely. We've done everything possible to make sure that when we do open, we will open safely. Because the one thing that we're more proud of than the magnificence of the wheel is the safety record of the wheel. Do you want to start walking? Yeah, let's take a walk. For you, you guys know us, we're family. Everybody in Coney Island is family one way or another. We're either brothers, sisters, or cousins. So we have our cousins at Luna Park. We're all here, we're all together, and we all want to reopen safely together. We all take that responsibility very seriously. So when the time comes to reopen, the plan for the Wonder Wheel would be we just walked it. Look at that wide open queue area. I see footsteps. Does that mark? Uh, no, we're, we're still. We I have, see decals we also. We do have the decals, but six feet, we could do 12 feet. Okay. We don't have to do six feet. That's why we stopped. We just did that as a test to see if it would stick and, and handle the weathering of footsteps. But we don't, we're not going to do six feet. We're going to do 10 or 12. It's on there. It's on there. You want to yep. give it another kick? I think I saw it more. Right. <laughs> so we do plan on opening safety. We're going to keep one family at a time in each queue. This and then, looks like new artwork. Yeah, well, we did, uh, everything's hand painted here. You know, we don't let machines do things that artists can do because we all need, uh, we all need to provide. And what makes Pony Island so special is the fact that everything is at, at hand done touch. So if you notice our signage is, are all handmade. They're all done by artists. Mm -hmm. So we did add some hundred year celebration things. And I see even murals painted on yep, walls. Yep, Danielle. Uh -huh. Mastrion did a lot of our painting. She, as you know, is uh, one of the She's about to paint of one of our front gates on Surf Avenue. So we have, uh, we're proud of, we're proud of uh, the artists in Brooklyn. We're proud okay. of. Um, so this is part of, uh, you're not even open and yet you have uh, your signage. Of course, you know, we, we don't know when we're going to open. We were planning on opening with phase four. And we understand, you know, we're not epidemiologists, so we're following the science, right. we're following our leaders. And we are proud to have leaders who care about the health and safety of our state. The problem is, Everybody else reopened so fast. Okay, so let's pause there. Um, Dino's Wonder Wheel Park and the Voderis family. You own this property on the Wonder Wheel, That's correct? correct. We, this is not something you're leasing from the city. No, this is privately owned property. Okay. So, in addition to the kitty park on the boardwalk, which the city does own, That's correct. and you lease, 
your family has a private investment. I believe you recently bought the property where the Polar Express and the Saturn right. Six were. You probably have a mortgage to pay. We are in a lot of trouble. Financially, we are in a lot of trouble, and I'd love to tell you what's going up there, but right now we're just trying to hold on to the Okay, material. so if you, I believe um, what in the business is a good thing that is referred to as a cash cow, a business that like keeps bringing you your money in. Um, I believe for a hundred years, starting with the Garms family, the Wonder Wheel is a successful ride. It's successful uh, financially and it's successful emotionally. So if you could open that, even that one ride, well, um, that's, that's what we're getting at. We know that there's certain safely. things that can't open. We're right. definitely not opening the indoor attractions. We're not opening things that can't be socially distanced. Things like the Wonder Wheel, the Cyclone, there's certain things that can open that we can regulate the crowds. We obviously aren't going to open the same way we did in the past. And you're not going to open it 100% capacity? Of course capacity. not. Of course not. I, I mean, we're not looking... But you could make some money and continue... Oh, it, your investment little... in the neighborhood that your family loves. Well, it's not just for our family, it's an investment in the neighborhood. Yep. We want to keep this community going. And honestly, at this point, even with just those rides open, it is going to be tough. So what we're trying to do now is try to muster up but what we need, what this country, what the city needs is another Marshall Plan. We did really you get need, PPP money? We did get some PPP okay. money. But and we got some at Coney Island, USA. That's great. And there yeah. have been some things that have helped, but they're pennies to dollars. So yes. there's, especially when you have, you know, if we can delay what we did at the new property, that would have been great. But this has been over two years in the planning. You know, what we're putting there has taken over 18 months to build. So it's done. It's ready. We purchased it over a year ago. And unfortunately, we're in a little bit of a hole now. It's great. We're extremely proud of it. It is something. I like to think of it as like Disney quality with Coney Island style. And nice. we can't wait. To I can't it wait. Because it is going to be a good neighbor for the Wonder Wheel. So something. we're not talking about a trailer mounted ride. No, this is going to We're be talking about something in 100 first years, we're going to celebrate built that. In. Exactly. Yes. This is going to be something that's it never been in Coney, Coney Island, Island to another level like Luna Park has. Exactly. But now this is going to be it's the a record breaker. It's the first of its kind in Coney Island. Wow. It's going to be something for families and adults that's going to be equally thrilling for both. But right now, as fun as, as much as we thought we were going to announce that and have this grand party for the Wonder Wheel right now, we're extremely nervous because we are close to losing the jewel. Okay. So bringing it back to the jewel, before we ride, and I'm so privileged uh, that you're allowing me and the Are you kidding? We're privileged ride. to have the mayor here. Wait, wait, but can we, even more privileged, can we see the motor? Can I'm, I'm we see show you the all hand that. crank? I'm going to show you all of that. When the power failed in a New York City blackout, I'm show they you. brought their customers down by hand, by hand crank. Back then, that's what they had to do, and we still have all that, and I'll go over all of that with you. But wherever we can put redundancy, we put redundancy. Okay. So we take that model of safety. And with the COVID. Landmarks Commission cooperation. Of course, but you can't tell. Like the Empire State Building had did the lighting. Right. We did the lighting with LEDs too. We've done some things, but you can't even tell. Please show us. So I'm going to take you in this way. If you want to sanitize your hands right here. We have everything touchless ticketing now. So everything is, you don't even have to touch no. it. Put your card next to it. It's all RFID and you're in. There you go. I think you have some sort of lifetime pass and you know somebody, right? I see red, white, and blue trails on the floor. So that's everybody who knows... If I follow red, that takes me to an exit? No. So there's red, white, and blue cars. The red yeah. and the blue cars swing. Those white cars are stationary like a regular, regular Ferris wheel. So it just makes it easier for people to follow. We tell them, go to the red line, go to the blue line, go to the white line. You know, I'm always on the swinging cars. I I'm not sure I've ever been on a white car, but what do you recommend? We recommend the swinging cars. Of you course. went on the cyclone, okay? I think you'll be all right. Yeah. So we'll show you the back first. So on this, this is the, uh, the this, this is, is the helm. So this is this is my my baby right here. This is the helm. I'm a big Star Trek fan. If you look closely at it, you'll see a lot of it Star looks Trek very references. Star Trek. In fact, since you're on, we'll go to warp three. 
<laughs> but um, do you think of yourself as Captain Kirk or no, Mr. Chekhov? I'm the engineer. Uh -huh. My father is Captain Kirk. Okay. God. Look at these gears, and then there's very vintage uh, pulley system up there. So everything is as of redundancy. That's one of the brakes. That's our main yeah. brake. We also have backup brakes. But I see two gears here. Do these two gears turn the entire wheel right so here? I'm going to show you everything, okay. but that is the main gear. That the is for gear. that is the backup gear. Uh -huh. So only one okay. gear turns the wheel. So right now that gear is on one of the brakes, and that gear has a backup brake. So I'm going to show you that when we go to the back, but because we're going indoors, I'm going to be super protective. And we made these on site. These were made here in our shop. So I'm sorry we can't mic you up, so be like me and shout loud. Huh? Yes. <laughs> All right, come on in. Come out. So this, right here. This is a privilege. It's a privilege for you to be here. This is the main motor. It was put in in 1918, and it's still running today. Wait, if the wheel opened in 1920, how did the motor put it? They had to build the motor before the wheel. Aha. Uh -huh. So maybe 1919, it's hard to figure out, but this right. is definitely here before 1920. So that's the main motor. And that up there is the backup motor. So they're like two independent clocks, if you will. Has the motor ever been rebuilt? It's or? been rewound at least once. And when, when they call somebody to rewind it, you know, I can't verify it, obviously, because this is before my time and my father's time. Nobody knew how to do it. They said, it's impossible for a motor to do what you guys think this motor can do. So you're telling me Freddie Garms actually repaired something? Yes. Listen, okay. they, they love this wheel as much as we did, and when it was their time to move on, they sold it to somebody else who would love and care for it as much as they did. Freddie was quite the character. So they got, the uh, story goes, is Thomas Edison's apprentice, one of his apprentices, to come, and he was the one who rewound the motor. You're sure it wasn't Nikola Tesla? He did invent the induction motor. You are right. But okay. I think even Edison people had to acknowledge they were wrong about that one. So I get where you're going. I'm a fan of history, too. But um, but here's the main motor. So what we have here is right now it's hooked up to my Star Trek computer. If there's ever any problem with my system, if Con Edison fails, if New York City I'm, has I'm a block, I'm gonna walk you through all of that. Okay. So right now you're hooked up to the ultra high tech dilithium powered whatever computer. So then you shovel coal into a we, furnace? We, we switch over to this system, that system, and that's the 1918-1920 system. It's all resistor-based. And it still can work? It still can work. After Hurricane Sandy, as soon as we got power to it, we flipped the switch and it turned right on. We switched over to the back. And is it true that once in family history you did crank people down? Not on our family because when we did have the blackout in the early 2000s, we always have a backup generator right here on site. So when we did lose power, we brought the backup generator in, we hooked it up to the computer, we fired it up and brought people down so with power. So that was late 70s? In 77, before we had been here, there is a hand crank. And I'll show you the hand crank. Here's the, I'm going to show you the difference between the computers. This so, is a great looking lever right So this here. is the night brake. This is like a parking brake of a car. You don't use it until you're parked. So when you're parked, you have your main brake and you have your backup brake. So this is the backup brake, which goes to the second gear. So each gear has a separate brake. So at night, we lock both gears up. So the difference between the 1920 system and the 2010 system... You want to get a shot of the 2010 system? The 2010 system is, I would say, anywhere from 50 to 100% more efficient. So it's like a car. Back in the days, they just used power. So they threw in all the power, and then they used those resistors to slow down the motor. But when you put power through a resistor, you create heat. What this does, when it wants to slow down the motor, it just like, if you've ever driven a hybrid car, when you take your foot off the gas, it slows down by itself because it turns the motor into a generator. So this runs a lot more efficiently than that system. Also gives a speed control. The computer, the computer can adjust for the weight. Whereas before, we would have to listen and hear where the weight was or remember where we loaded, so we loaded the wheel. So, in a worst case scenario, a major hurricane, you don't want the wheel to start spinning Which around. Is great. In a major hurricane, we have a, a bypass key. You turn that key and you, you open up like a new speed system that can go even faster than the original. And we can get people down in like two minutes. So, that's uh, warp nine. <laughs> 
So yeah, so and even in this system, we have our, ma our, our main motor, we have our auxiliary motor, we have our main computer. The main computer ever goes down, we have a backup relay system. So there's like ultimate redundancy built in here. And if for some reason all of this fails, we switch those cables, go to the backup motor. If that fails, we come out here. We tie up the cable and we hand crank the wheel. Right here. Yep. We tie that cable up. And, and this is forward. original equipment. Yep, all original. We turn it, we turn it every month just to make sure it moves. It's not hooked up yet. You won't be able to turn it. Because you have to open it's a ratchet, so you have to open the ratchet and you know, get it going. But uh, you tie it up, it's slower. But once you unload maybe two or three people, the weight of the wheel will bring the rest of the people down by itself. And then you just operate the handbrake, which is just a manual brake. In terms of us all being family and sharing some uh, secrets that people usually don't know, um, where these flower beds are there, I believe, is a pet cemetery. And so it, it to be a, honest, one of my cats is buried here. It is a pet cemetery, but it's also in memory of my grandmother who passed away recently from Alzheimer's. So we named it Lula's Garden, which is my grandmother's name, who my grandfather bought the Wonder Wheel for. Yes. And that whole story, the story is he didn't have money to buy her a ring, so he says, I want to marry you, and one day I'll buy you that. And you have the biggest ring in the world. Uh, on the boardwalk, on the I boardwalk, had a right. Siamese cat. Um, the original Siamese twins in Barnum Sideshow were Chang and Ang. If you run it together, Chang and Ang, the Siamese cat, is buried right about there. And a lot of our canines are buried up somewhere in here as well. Back when we had, uh, the previous owners had canines and we were, we were always, you know, animal lovers. So a lot of our, our pets from our house, you know, once they started here and then we brought them home and then, so it's this, this piece of land here is so special to us. And when we had that attraction built, we made the queue area incorporate this so that people are going to line up coming in from this way. And this will be like the centerpiece of the queue area. Just because, you know, we love history so much, and I know nobody else is going to well, know that except for us. that's the mixture of family right. and history that makes Coney Island, uh, and it being the birthplace of the amusement industry, so strong. You know, that's you're, we have to fight for. you're that's we have sharing to uh, your family's history with the Ward family history, and the Ward family were original settlers. They're, they are. Prior to the Wards, it was just... A sandbar. When we had an engineer, and I'm going to tell you a little side story just to, to know how the universe speaks to you. When we had to pick an engineer that designed some things for this new attraction, he says, oh, I know Coney Allen. I used to know a person named Ward. And I just went, okay, you're hired. <laughs> Jack Ward, <laughs> wonderful man. And that was it. And then he told me that the charity work they all did together, and that, uh, that definitely made us yep. more inclined. I can take this off that we're outside. Yeah. So are we ready to ride? Yeah, you're ready to ride. I'm going to take you on. So since I've got your attention while you guys are setting up getting ready to ride a 100 year old piece of art and fun. In 2011 we added solar panels to every car to bring back that iconic look that you remember in the Warriors film of the Wonder Wheel swinging cars illuminated. They had neon and then there and were then they no had tracer exactly. lights. So we added the solar panels which charge during the daytime and then they powered a battery that's hitting, hidden under the seat. And at night, we would have that same look, only it was completely renewable with the solar panels. So when the pandemic hit, I said, how can we quickly disinfect? You know, what's the best way to go about this? Because we actually announced that we were closing before the lockdown, because we knew that this was a serious threat. We wanted to make sure that we were safe. We didn't think we were going to stay closed this long, but safety first. So I was reading scientific papers, studies. I learned about UV light. And what we could do, once it's peer reviewed and we know it's safe, because it isn't yet, is instead of powering these lights, put a disinfecting bulb in the car and run that off the solar panels. So I, I basically, you know, I did the, I did the math, I did the homework, because, you know, Star Trek. And we have more than enough power to run a disinfecting light. Can you give me a shower of disinfectant? See, that's what we're waiting for. So there is a wavelength of, of UV light called far UV. I'm not going to get too technical, but it is, there's one study that proved that it is safe 
for to be around people and it will kill COVID as you breathe. Until that's peer reviewed, we're not comfortable doing it. But, and it is just more scientifically proven to just wipe everything down, but that is an option for us. We're just waiting for peer review. And we're not gonna invest that kind of money if we don't know that we're opening. But if you were allowed to open next week, you'd be wiping down. If we down. were allowed, we'd be wiping down. Once that gets peer reviewed, I have the batteries already built. I have the solar panels already installed. We were gonna relight the wheel with, with that system for its 100th anniversary. So instead of lighting the wheel, we're gonna, we would have used the UV. Which is so if what the subways are doing. Your fans, fans of the Wonder Wheel, want to talk to the right politician that can you let the Wonder Wheel and Cyclone open responsibly? Do they email the governor or the mayor or Dr. Fauci? So who there's, who there's, decides? There's one thing that I have to make perfectly straight. I see both opinions on this. And I'm not saying sides because we're all on the same side. The one thing when COVID hit that I thought about was, well, at least this is an enemy that all of humanity can fight together. And I'm a little disturbed that we've branched off so much. So I'm not wearing a mask. I am wearing a mask. We all need to wear a mask. And number two, we understand why we were supposed to close. It was the patriotic thing to do. It was the responsible thing to do. We do, however, feel that we can open some rides, not all the rides, responsibly. And believe me, like I said before, safety is, I can't sleep at night. So again, if people want to lobby and like talk to politicians, who decides about the Wonder Wheel? Is it the I mayor think, or I the think, governor? I think it's gonna be the governor. So if I had two things to say to the governor, the first thing I would say is thank you. Thank you for putting lives ahead of money. But if I had two things to say about the governor, I would say, but we have really found a way to make opening at least this attraction and the cyclone safe. So there needs to be a middle. And it's true that at one point, the governors of New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, the tri-state area agreed to coordinate, yet 10 miles from here, Today, 10 miles away in New Jersey, there are amusement park rides and I, that and are I, open. And I'm going to say, just to play devil's advocate, because I know where you're trying to go with this, yeah. I, I get it. I totally get it. But I, I'm not bashing anybody. I'm not going to do it. I, I just think... Neither than I, but if, I want to know who is the, making the decision if people it is the want governor. to... It's definitely the governor. And I'm trying to think if I was in that situation. I think they're trying... And I, I'm pulling myself out of the Coney Island box. So if you put, if you, we're, you're, we're here, we're all starving. We might lose this business because we're closed. If we can't get some sort of Marshall Plan or economic aid, the Wonder Wheel is going to be owned by somebody else. And that is extremely distressing for, that's why everybody's a little depressed. We're trying to be up, as upbeat as we can, but we may actually lose this. We might lose the business. And we understand the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. And I think the problem is there hasn't been a national strategy. So that's why, you know, the states are all, it's all in a free-for-all. And that's why we're not open. Because if we all lock down the same way and we all reopen the same way, you wouldn't be the only one on this ride right now. We would all be enjoying Coney Island together. And that's why I'm here today making this video with and, you. And we appreciate it. We would love to, and I think that is part of the problem. I think people assume that when Coney Island opens, we're gonna get that mass of people here and it's gonna be extremely dangerous and you're not gonna be able to socially distant. And we are not gonna open that way. We'd be insane to open that way. We'd be irresponsible to open that way. We're gonna open just our major attractions. We're gonna be able, that we can queue 12 feet apart. And it, you, look, this is one family. We've always social distanced the Wonder Wheel. We haven't social distanced the line, but because all the other attractions are gonna be closed, we have the room to do so. So this is so one family, that's one family. And a father with two or three you're kids. Only, if you're just one person, this is your car. It's right. always been that way. And if you're a family, your family gets then the your family gets car. The car. And then you guys leave, we disinfect the car, and the next family will start coming in. So we're going to bring somebody in, we're going to have somebody else by the gate, and then when one and person comes in... this is all outdoors, the line is outdoors, the ride is in fresh air. It's in fresh air, and when these doors close, you're still getting ventilation here. It is a MERV 14 ventilation system. Because <laughs> MERV 13 being the highest. So we are, you know, we're thankful 
I mean, the reason why, I mean, our community, the Coney Island community got hit the hardest in the beginning. So we're not, we're not numb to that. We know what this community had to deal with. We all know somebody who has passed because of this disease. So we take that responsibility seriously. And we won't open unless we, we know that we can put our family on here. Because we have immune compromised people in, in my family. And they're going to be working here. And, and unless we feel like it's safe for them, we're not going to open to the public. But we do feel like we have taken everything we can. And if restaurants can have outdoor seating, there's no reason why the Wonder Wheel can't have outdoor memories. Let's make a memory. Go! It's 2020, and it is my privilege to take you, viewers, on the 2020 ride on the landmark 100-year-old Wonder Wheel. Thank you, Dino's Wonder Wheel Park. Let's do this! Lock and load. Ready? Ready. Engage. Engage. Look, Ma, no hands. Woo! So, um, the Wonder Wheel is a combination Ferris wheel roller coaster. It is not, um, you don't experience G-force, you don't experience airtime, it's more um, a surprise and for people who have a fear of falling in a moment like this, whoa, you might really get scared in your head, but it's really a pretty mild ride. Um, just shakes you up a bit and it gives you wind and it's a ferris wheel so wind gives you a view it's a roller coaster it's a ferris wheel it's a, a, a tourist observation tower um the camera is aimed at all different areas so um let me see if i can help straighten that up yeah i got it i got it um, I've been told even no matter how hard I might try and like rock it back and forth, eh, the physics are really impossible. Um, we can't swing over. Instead, you and your family can enjoy this incredible view of Manhattan. And oh, you can see the Verrazano Narrows Bridge on the Steeplechase Pier a great shot in New Jersey, and you really get an overview of all of Coney Island. Um, so it was built by the Eccentric Wheel Company, and it truly is eccentric, and uh, the Garms family paid for it and ran it until uh, the early 1980s when Dino Voderis of Dino's Wonder Wheel Park uh, bought the park from Freddie Garms, whose father was the original owner. Um, and it truly, it's not only one of three landmark rides in Coney Island, only two of which you can ride on in a normal year. You can ride the Cyclone like we rode um, last year. You can ride the Wonder Wheel like we're riding today. Uh, the third landmark ride is the Parachute Jump, which is beautifully restored as a monument and lights up at night, but is not in operation uh, for the parachutes. Oh, uh, and that's our ride, so. Sure, fun. let's go again. It's good to be the mayor. No? Nope. Yeah, right? I think I can handle it. Alright. We ride again. It's the Wonder Wheel. I believe um Disney in California um has a full scale replica they call the Sun Wheel. 
I believe there is an authorized replica in an amusement park in Japan. Uh, but we in Coney Island cherish it is um, our oldest of our three historic rides. Um, Coney Island USA's landmark building um, is uh, three years older than the Wonder Wheel. Uh, it originally was a restaurant, but it's a 1917 building. Uh, we're celebrating right now a hundred years old on um, this ride. Um, the cyclone is was built in 1927. Um, it's in its 90s and um, we are so fortunate in the birthplace of the amusement industry to have beautifully restored and functioning rides like the Wonder Wheel, which is rocking, it's rocking. And a nice breeze. Uh, honestly, today is Tuesday and we're filming this in 103 degree weather right now. And it's breezy up here, yeah. The Wonder Wheel. I like the forward visuals when on as you come down. Uh, whoa! You don't see the, where the track above you is, and you could imagine easily you're just going to go flying out into the street, West 12th Street, except you don't because it's a safe ride, the Wonder Wheel. I wonder how it works. This is a great job to have. Maybe we can talk him into a ride on Spookorama. Spookorama? Absolutely, it's social distanceable. We'll do okay, it. let's see if we can social distance Spookorama. Thank you, Wonder Wheel. I mean, Spookorama was just a motor and a gear. And you set it out and it just did its thing. It was great. So what we did is, because you know, I like to play with new toys, is I added a computer underneath each car. So now the computers regulate the speed, so we don't need as many physical brakes. We still have them as, as an emergency, but what that enables us to do now is space the cars out in a way that we can ensure proper distancing, and also slow the cars down, which gives you a little more time in the ride, and a little more time for us to disinfect between the ride. So that's just one other thing that we have. So right now we have the inverters running at 30 hertz, which is about half speed. I'd probably lower that to 15 or 20. Slows the ride down, gives people more time inside, but also lets us have time to disinfect each car. Because we don't plan on running past 25, 30% capacity anyway. So we'd probably take out some cars. If you look, we've already stripped some of the cars of the foam because this is just an easier material to wipe. Even in our kitty section, like we have steering wheels, take those out. They're hard to clean, they're hard to get in the crevices. We can take those out, I can 3D print something that goes flush. We have a buzzer. A buzzer is as simple to wipe. You're not going to miss a buzzer. You're not going to miss something flush. You might miss parts of the steering wheel. So we really have thought of everything possible. Even though we know it's probably not going to open, we're ready in case whatever happens in the future, hopefully not, we are ready to take precautions to make things as safe as possible. We are riding Spookorama, a 1955 dark ride at Coney Island, next to the Wonder Wheel, in the middle of a pandemic, in 2020, 
and I'm a little bit scared. It's getting dark. There's spooks on the wall. I'm the only one on the ride. The spooks inside haven't had anyone to spook for a year now. I guess I am the guinea pig. But socially distanced, wearing a face covering, and we're going through the crash doors, the point of no return. Ah! It's dark, it's completely dark. Ah! Whoa. Wonder Wheel Park without introducing you all to uh, Dino Voderis' eldest son, Dennis. We've been friends for 40, 41 years. I lost count after the first well, decade, Dick. Um, so I know things are hard on you. I know you've gotten some news yeah. today in real time that's very hard, so I'm not going to keep you long. Uh, but we're doing this video uh, we're going to put up on our website and hopefully get some traction. Uh, so do you want to say something about how the governor could help Coney Island about what the wonderful Voderis family needs for support? How do we make sense out of what's left of uh, Well, we could make sense when it's safe to open will open. Uh, but as time is going on, it gets less practical to open. So if, if, if the governor can help us financially, that would be great. But I don't think it's going to be a decision that's made timely enough for us to open. But to be clear, you're ready to open the Wonder Wheel right away. I yeah, think you can do it safely. We can open the Wonder Wheel this afternoon if given the permission. Yeah, it's ready to go. Steve has worked diligently to make it safe for people to ride, uh, socially distant. He 
to install plexiglass everywhere to make sure that the staff remains safe and out of harm's way. But we are, uh, we're hurting financially. So with our fans from Coney Island, USA, Dino's Wonder Wheel fans, Alliance for Coney Island fans, want to help, do they send an email to the governor? Uh, how can they be supportive? That, that probably would help, sure. But uh, financially, um, we are running out of time to open. So it doesn't look like if, if the second week of August goes by and we are not given the green light to open, we don't know that we will be able to open for this year. Only because it doesn't make financial sense for us to open up for two weeks and then the season ends. Yeah. Even <laughs> if we extend the season, uh, the kids have to go back to school and, and, and stuff, so we don't feel that it, it'll be worth it. But we're going to try. And once again, for you folks, um, Coney Island is the world's original amusement park. This is where it began. It's not just the city-owned Luna Park. Um, my organization is a not-for-profit, but not run by Luna Park, not run by the city. And Dino's Wonder Wheel Park is a private company. It's a privately it owned company within the family. Uh, but right now it is a non-for-profit as well. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, but there are families here. It's not one giant corporation. Correct. Um, the baseball stadium is different from the amphitheater. Right. Your rides are different from Luna Parks. And don't forget, Dick, we, we, it's not just the Buderis family that's eating off of this uh, establishment. There's over a hundred people that work here and their families are also having a hard time. And seasonal workers, another 50 who work at Coney Island, USA? There you go. I mean, you know, the PPP loans and all that other stuff, that was definitely helpful, but People are running out of unemployment now and they want to get back to work and they've been calling and calling and saying, when are we going to open? When are we going to open? I could tell you that Joanne is fielding probably a hundred phone calls a day from potential customers that say, when are you guys opening? Groups, groups are being canceled as we speak. Groups are calling and we have to turn them down. Day camps want to come, can't come. So it's, it's not only financially hurtful, but it's emotionally draining as well. Uh, because you know you have such an asset here that is ready to rock and roll. We love you. You know that I've always been a friend to your family. I yes. think your You've family always been good to us, is uh, wonderful for Coney Island. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the fun uh, for me personally of going on the Wonder Wheel How and was the it? rides. How was it? It was great. It's always great, but let's open it for everybody else, not yeah, just for we're me. We're trying. We're trying. We, we're, we're having conference calls daily, uh, speaking with government officials and speaking with our associations. And we've joined other associations from the Northeast as well to get behind us and kind of push um, up, push Our up trade course. association, IAPA, the International yes. Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions, yes. are they lobbying in Washington? They're lobbying Washington currently to um, extend the PPP and reintroduce additional So they're funds. looking after small operators Absolutely. like yourselves, Absolutely. not just Disneyland. Yes. Yes, they are, and so is the New England Amusement Park Association and the New Jersey Amusement Association. Everybody's lobbying, and we're all rowing in the same direction, um, And but there's no, there's no uh, light at the end. We don't see the light at the end of the tunnel yet for New York City or New York State. There are many amusement parks up in New York State that are in phase four like us that cannot open. But 10 miles from here in New Jersey, there's an amusement park. I can that's see open. on a Friday night, I can see Keensburg Amusement Park's fireworks from here. So I can see them. Did the governors, the tri-state governors agree to coordinate? Yes, initially, but now it's, uh, that obviously has changed okay. uh, based on all science and data. So. And we don't want to criticize Governor Cuomo, who, as all of you know, uh, has become a national uh, treasure and for the most part is doing things right. Doing a great uh, job. In Coney Island, we feel we could use more guidance. 
we're in phase four. You said last week there are no phases beyond phase four. So we do want to work with you, Governor Cuomo. We're not stupid in Brooklyn. This isn't Florida. Uh, right. We're not right. like the idiots um, holding like street parties outside of bars. We want to work with you, but please, uh, in a responsible way, a responsible way, uh, please try and work with us. That's right. That's right. Um, he's doing a fantastic job, and he's going by the science and the data, and we appreciate that. And when he says it's safe to to open up our gates, we will be happy to do so, given we have enough time to uh, implement our safety protocols and get people used to our reservation system, which we've. Uh, been working on so we need some time to ramp up but I, I'm telling you the Wonder Wheel is ready to go we can open that tomorrow or this afternoon if given the opportunity so you folks out there you be safe too yes. wear your mask especially yes. if you're coming to our neighborhood uh, wash your hands all the time yes. um, know that we care about you and talk to your politicians if you live in New York um, our mayor is your mayor. Our governor is your governor. Right. Uh, talk to your elected officials. And if you're a fan of Coney Island and we think we could reopen safely, uh, please help us. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. We appreciate the, the positive words and the positive thinking. Everybody think positive. 2020 will come eventually and the Wonder Wheel will spin for its 100th year. Keep our fingers crossed. But we keep and we'll everybody. be back at you with positivity yeah. next week. Very good. Thank you. Indeed. There you go.